Merry Christmas. This is the Christmas Eve service for Centenary United Methodist Church in Bath, New York for the year 2020. And it's not how we necessarily want it to be, but it's how it has to be in order to keep each other safe. But no matter how we're celebrating Christmas this year, um, Jesus still has come. And Jesus will still come again. We know that nothing that happens in this world can change who our God is. So we come to celebrate our newborn king as we look for the risen king to come again in the future. I invite you to gather with you together for yourself um, those little green Christmas Eve bags that we gave out. Um, if you don't have one, um, you can always use candles that you have on your own for the lighting at the end of the service when we sing Silent Night. Um, we invite you to have a nativity set that you can put together in, in your sacred space, um, adding Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus during the scripture reading and the shepherds and angels. We invite you to have an advent wreath that you can um, uh, light as we light the candles and extinguish when we extinguish the candles. Um, to follow along with the service, you will have the service um, attached in the um, green bag for you, and I'm going to try to find a way to attach it to the video. So we invite you to worship with us um, our Emmanuel. The um, first song that we will sing is O Come, All Ye Faith. God's image. 
Blessed are you, O God, who has filled our world with order and light, the light of hope, the light of love, the light of joy, and the light of peace. You called us, your people, placed us in the world that you created for us, and you walked with us daily. We were called to keep the chaos and darkness out and to nurture life. But our love failed. We chose our own selfish ways, and where your hope filled creation, we sowed seeds of despair. Where your love flowed through creation, we stirred the waters of fear. Where your joy resonated through creation, our song turned into mourning. And where peace embraced creation, we recoiled and turned violent. And so the world you created, O oh Lord, was plunged into darkness and chaos. We chose to live outside of your presence. In doing so, we were at war with ourselves, with each other, with creation, with you. We no longer dwelt in the place you created for us or walked with you daily. Blessed are you, O oh God, for your love never fails. Your mercies are new every morning. You invited Abraham and his descendants to join your work of redemption. Moses was called to be your hand of deliverance to a people enslaved. In the wilderness, you made a covenant with Israel. You resided with Israel in the temple, tabernacle and temple. Blessed are you, O God, who showed mercy and grace to Abraham, Moses, and the people of Israel. And when your people failed, your love remained steadfast. You spoke through the prophets, promising that we who have walked in darkness will see a great light. You promised a child is born to us. A son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. You promised you would send our Emmanuel, God, with us. One who would reveal your glory to us would come and dwell among us and save us from sin and death.
How blessed, blessed are, are you, O oh God, who never abandoned your people. In grace you call to us. In time, you sent your angel to Mary of Nazareth, choosing her to bear the Messiah. You invited Mary and Joseph to join in your work of redemption. The scripture lesson is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar of Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax list. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Let us sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. Blessed, Blessed are, are you, O God, God, who visited your creation, creation being born, born in a manger, sending angels to shepherds, shepherds and, and blessing the humble with, with your presence. presence. The following reading is based upon John 1. In the beginning, God spoke light into darkness, order into chaos, and light into nothingness. When our love failed, we let darkness and chaos back in. Death haunts us. And so, O oh God, you spoke your creative words into our brokenness again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning, Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. You spoke light into our darkness, and the darkness could not put you out. You spoke order into our chaos, when we could not recognize you, and you called us your sons and daughters, when you spoke light and order, this time your word became flesh and dwelt among us. You put on flesh and moved into our neighborhood, shining the light of hope. Shining the light of love. Shining the light of joy. Shining the light of peace. We light the Christ candle proclaiming Christ is the light of the world, and the darkness of this present time cannot extinguish God's Christ's light. We light this candle to remember the Word put on flesh and walked among us, loving us all the way to the cross, and forever to remain our Emmanuel, God with us. We light this candle, proclaiming Christ is born. Blessed are you, Lord Christ, light of the world. Now, now let us sing joy to the world.
favorite song by Billy Joel back in the 80s? I actually have it on my phone with the lyrics. It's because I can't sing the lyrics as fast as he does. But the chorus goes, we didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world was turning. We didn't start the fire. <laughs> but we've always fought it. We didn't start it, but we've been fighting it. And that's the truth. The story of Christianity tells us, while we may not have started the fire, and we fight against the fire sometimes, we actually add to the fire, and we keep that fire going. And in that song, Billy Joel is naming off um, famous people like Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe, tyrants like, you know, Karl Marx and the likes, and famous things that happened in the world, and just kind of rattling those all off. And in this chaos, all of this has been happening. We didn't start the fire. And right now, we feel like we're in the midst of a fire. The world is burning. We've been saying that for a while, partially because California and Washington and Oregon and parts of our nation have been on fire for months now. Australia, before that, was on fire. But also, the fire of the pandemic that has kept us apart. That has interrupted every plan that we had for the year 2020. Has stolen loved ones and friends from us. Has even, it feels like, stolen Christmas, although we can't steal Christmas. And in fact, maybe right now, this is the most Christmassy Christmas we'd ever have. Because we have a nice, cleaned up version of Christmas. You know, we've got the nativity. Mary looks delightful and, and at peace. I, I'm not sure I've ever seen a mother who just gave birth to a child look so peaceful. And the shepherds, I mean, and how many people with their firstborn child is going to let a shepherd with sheep come up into their way? We have this sanitized Christmas, and our Christmases usually entail us decorating our Christmas tree and our house, and by Christmas Eve, we've started cooking. And that aroma of the food is all of a sudden taking place and, and filling that space. And we might have some Christmas music in the background. And then all of a sudden people start arriving. And Christmas Eve, loved ones come into town and you welcome them. And then you have to hurry off to church. And you come to church and you sit in a beautifully clean worship service section sanctuary with the lights and the bell choir and the choir and everybody you know and you're hugging everybody and saying it's good to see you Merry Christmas you're being given your bulletin and your little candle you sit down you follow the order of worship and then everybody oh goodbye Merry Christmas and you go home to your well-kept house that still smells like the food that you're cooking and you just celebrate Christmas in such a neat and organized way I mean, it's chaotic because you've got the kids and people running around, but it's the chaos that you want. I'm pretty sure that Mary was not sitting there going, you know what I think would be the best circumstances for birth? Let's have to travel all the way down from Galilee in Nazareth to Bethlehem. Because nobody wants to, I mean, don't, isn't every nine month? Pregnant woman want to just go on a journey. And let's let's have the baby, let's get there late so there's no place for us to stay and I can give birth in a manger. It's if it's not the way Mary probably wanted to welcome her firstborn child. It's not the way that any of us would plan to greet a very important person let alone God in flesh, come to visit us. But the mess of that manger, the mess that we're in now, 
It wasn't started by us and it wasn't started by Mary. It was started a long time ago as we've been going through the story of scripture in this evening's um, liturgy. We talked about starting off, God created us and put us in the garden. We were to be gardeners and keep the darkness and chaos out and nurture life. And we feared something. We were afraid we were missing something. God had shortchanged us. We wanted more. And so out of fear, we have reacted. And we've been reacting ever since. We lit that match. And that match has been burning. And ever since, we've been afraid. We've been fearful. We have been living and reacting and motivating people out of that fear. Wars start because we're afraid that other country has more things or they're going to hurt us. We, we are fearful in our relationships and jealous and, and it just, the fire keeps on burning. We didn't start the fire. It's been burning since the world started turning. And as much as we try to fix it, through religion, through education, through all of our efforts, the fire just keeps on raging. That chaos and that fear just keeps on raging. And this year we feel that usually we are able on Christmas to push it aside, kind of like the story from the First World War when Germany stopped fighting on December 24th, and the Allies stopped fighting, and there were no bullets flying across the land, and they all of a sudden started to sing in their own native tongues, in English, in French, in German, Silent Night. And we hold that up as, look at how powerful Christmas is. But the problem was that Christmas didn't grab a hold of them because the next day after Christmas, they started, started shooting each other again. We've been reacting out of fear in our Christmas day. And for Christmas season, we get to shove it a little bit further away and act like the world's not burning and celebrate Christmas like all is well. But the problem is, the day after, Christmas needs to get a hold of us because the solution that God had for us when we reacted out of fear was to speak the words of creation once more. In Genesis, he says, let there be light. And when he says, let there be light this time, the light of the world comes and God takes on flesh and walks among us. And the thing about Christmas and Advent is that it is yelling to us that this is not how the world was created to be. What we're living in, the fire that is burning with fear and anger and violence, that's not how we were created for. That's not what we were created for. And it's not how we have to live. We don't have to throw our hands up and say, what are you going to do? This is what nations do. What do we do? It's just, this is how it is. You're never going to change anyone. Have you ever heard that from people? That's the opposite of what Christmas says, because Christmas says God has stepped into the world. God didn't just come to keep the status quo. God has come to say, you don't have to continue in fear. You don't have to live in fear. You can love abundantly and fearlessly. And even when others react in anger and fear to you, you don't have to keep that fire going. You don't have to add fuel to their fire. You can love them instead. And that is how the world changed by the Holy Spirit rekindling in us the image of God. We have all been created in the image of God. Why? Because we were called to remind the world who God is and that God is with us 
and that God is for us and that God has a better way for us. We don't have to live in the fear. We don't have to keep the fire burning. And we don't have to fight it on our own. Instead, God with us, Emmanuel, has come, spoken his very being into our world, walked among us, died our death, and risen to new life so that we in the here and now can rise to new life by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And we can stop that cycle of violence. We can stop the cycle of fear. But it means that you and I need to connect with God with us. Because on my own, I have a lot to fear. But with God in me, I don't have to fear. And I can, I can lay down my need to be right and prove to you how right I am. And I can sit with you, and we can lament our brokenness. We can love each other despite our disagreements, politically, theologically, or any way. And we can affirm that God loves us. And we can work by the power of the Holy Spirit to love better, to be more merciful, to be more like our Emmanuel, God with us. That reminder of the presence of God. You know, one of the most, my favorite things is to do is to have communion. I always lament that no church in, that I've served has ever wanted to have communion every week. When I was in seminary, I had communion every week. They had it in the Wednesday chapel. And it was amazing because when I got to communion the first week there, Oh, it's, it's exciting. What are we going to learn? What's going to happen this semester? I've got this great, I've got Dr. Richter. I'm looking forward to it. And, and there was so much excitement, and the message was amazing. And whoo. Then the next week when you came, you had gotten your syllabus from every single class, and you wondered how you were going to do it. And you looked at the amount of reading that the teachers wanted you to have. And you looked at the amount of papers you would have to write. And you had to go to the bookstore and buy all your books. And that was a hefty fee. And you looked for the used section. And you went home with $5 left, if you're lucky. If not, you were talking to somebody that was in the class, can I, can I borrow the book with you until I can afford it? And I came to Jesus at the table one week excited, and next week, I don't think I'm going to make it through the semester. Then a couple weeks later, the bills are coming in, and fear settles in. I still met Jesus there when I came to the table. And then the next week, man, I wrote a paper for Dr. Richter, who never gives out A's, and she gave me an A. And there is rejoicing in heaven and all around me. I'm framing that paper. And I come to the table and Jesus is there. And then I am in the middle of the semester and it's just a lot of work and I'm tired. And I can't remember the last time I prayed because I've had to do so much reading. And I come to the table and Jesus is still there. It was the most amazing effect to have every time I came to the table. I met Jesus. No matter what was going on in my life, the ups and the downs, the highest of highs, the lowest of lows, and in my one semester, in the middle of the semester, my grandmother died. Jesus was still at that table. He met me there. This table is a gift from God to us as a reminder that whatever we're going through in all of our lives, whether we are just going through the motions, or we are at the mountaintop, or we are in the valley of the shadows and we don't know how we're going to go on, Jesus meets us at this table as a reminder that God is with us. And because of meeting Jesus at that table, 
man, I really got through seminary, and I did decently, and I got before the Board of Ordained Ministry, and I connected to who Jesus is in my life because I met him at this table every time I came. So here in the middle of our mess, the most Christmassy Christmas ever, because I, we really have a manger. It's an animal stall that we feel like we're living in right now. Jesus, once again, will come to us. God will speak the words, let there be light, let there be life, once again, into the mess that we have here in 2020, just like he did back in Bethlehem and just like he did at the beginning of creation. And we can have Jesus with us always. No matter what we're facing, God with us. Now we are empowered to once again be the gardeners. Keeping order, keeping the lights on, nurturing life. Jesus has restored us to being fully human again. So as we come to the table, I invite you to picture Christ with you. I might even take that little cup that you have with the wafer and the juice and put it right where Jesus is in your manger. Jesus is offering himself to you today in this meal. I invite you to join along with me in the communion, communion liturgy. While the cup and bread that you have received has already been blessed, we will still go through the liturgy. As we gather at this table, we remember the night when Christ was betrayed. He took the bread and he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Bread of heaven, broken for us, make us whole in you. We remember the cup which Christ took, blessed, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. Cup of peace, fill us with your peace and forgiveness. God of creation and God of redemption, you have poured out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup. We pray you pour out your Spirit on us so that as we partake in the blood and body of blood of Christ, we may become for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. O Christ, be born in us this night so that your love and peace would flow through our very being to a world in need. Amen. I invite you to partake of your communion. The body of Christ, bread of heaven, broken for you so that you may be whole. Receive the cup. It says the blood of Christ, the cup of peace offered to you for your forgiveness of your sins that we might go and forgive others. Amen. As we have partaken in this mystery of Christ offering himself to us, we now turn to sing Silent Night we invite you to light the Christmas Eve candle from your Christ candle that you hopefully have lit next to you. And if you can safely dim the lights in your home as you sing Silent Night, we invite you to do so. And the bells will lead us in Silent Night. Merry Christmas.
Amen. Amen.